Hello and welcome down onto the Tech Desk and in today's video we're going to be looking at this. So this is the Warrior controller from Nixie. Uh, it's the blue controller for the Nintendo GameCube, the Nintendo Switch, the Wii and Windows. And in the purposes of this video we are going to be using it on the Nintendo Switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through five things that I think are brilliant about this and then I'm going to run a few, a few things that you probably need to consider before buying one of these. So I've got the one, the purple here, and I've got a black and I've got an orange. I haven't opened these ones because I've only been using these. So I've been using this for the past couple of weeks now. I haven't even taken out these, but I thought I'd get these out just so we can compare the colors. I'll do that later. Right, so the box here, this is it. The picture of it on the front, brilliant. Spin it over. Um, I'll leave a uh, graphic of these which shows you all of kind of like the, the specification of it. Uh, it tells you about ultra compactibility, um, HD rumble, hall effect joystick, adjustable hall sensing triggers as well, optical micro switches. Again, I'll be running through all of these. Right, so when you get it and you get your box, you get your nice box. So it's a really decent box in there. Um, and inside, Get yourself a manual, it tells you all about it, how to use the functions, brilliant. And then under here in the pack accessory, you get this box. And in this box, you're gonna get yourself a nice branded braided USB-C cable. Uh, this is a really, really nice cable. Um, a couple of spare rings. So these are the octagonal ones. I've actually taken these off the controller. These were actually on there before. And you get yourself um, a spare one of these. So this one, again, I'll show you the differences between those in a bit. Uh, this, which is the back plate for the paddles. Again, I'll explain what that is in a bit. This, your GameCube adapter. So if you want to play this on the GameCube, you're gonna need to use this. And then you get yourself another nicely branded, but much shorter, so about 15 centimeter uh, USB-A to USB-C cable. Uh, these bits, I'll do this bit later, because that's one of my points here. So as you can see, you can swap these over. So this O-ring here, so the ring around here, you can actually take this off like so, and you can replace it. So you can either have this one or this one. Personally, I wear for this one. I don't know the need for the octagonal one, but you might. And for the kind of authentic GameCube experience, the kind of little nubby one, because if you can see, they're different sizes on there. Okay, um, I'm going for the bigger one. So let me just pop these back on. Right, and this is my first point of the five things that I really like about this, and it is the comfort and the build. Um, this seems to be built very, very well. It's very solid. All of the differences between the two parts that are cut together, so the kind of top bit and the bubble, nice and smooth all the way around there. It feels really well made. It feels nice and substantial in the hand. But the best thing, probably the best thing about this controller and the thing you will notice when you get it out is the comfort. It is super comfortable in the hand. I mean, proper. I think it has something to do with this. So this is nice and flat here. Okay, can you see that? So it's flat there and quite large. That just beautifully sits in the palm of your hand there like that. Everything. You, it just slots in your hand brilliantly for the where the placement of the triggers, whether you use one finger or two fingers, and to get your thumb round here, that's not an issue. You're just moving your palm up a little bit and then playing it there like that with reach of all of the buttons there. The comfort is absolutely fantastic on this. And the next thing is the buttons and the triggers. That's number two as well. There's some really nice features on this with these buttons. Okay, so it has your regular, it has your um, asymmetrical sticks. They're quite pronounced as well because it has kind of like that GameCube feel to it. Hall effect sensor sticks here, which is fantastic, which the Boffers HQ tell us that will never get drift ever again. Brilliant. Uh, this, the minus plus uh, screenshot and home, they're all pretty much as you'd expect buttons. Now these are a little bit different. These are your mousey click buttons. Personally, I really like them. I really like the mouse click buttons, but when I did a video before, um, and I said about the mouse click buttons on one of uh, my controllers, there's a few people said they didn't like it. So this will be in my things I don't like, but I'll say it anyway now, is if you don't like mouse click buttons, you're probably not gonna get on with this, okay? I really like them. So when you click it, it feels like you're clicking a mouse button in, okay? I'm a huge fan of these. If you're not, it, this one won't be for you. 
Okay, so let's talk about the D-pad here. This is the D-pad. Um, I know D-pads are a personal preference. Um, personally, this is probably going to go into the one of the things I didn't really like. Um, it's, I mean, this this could be for you. If I'm pressing here to be able to click upwards, it's really it's dead easy. There's a lot of times I was accidentally pressing it into the corners. Um, I'm not going to say it's bad because it might be for you. And if you look up, it's really quite high as well. Okay, so again, this this might be for you. This might be for you. You just got to tell whether work out whether this one is for you or not with the D-pad. But when I was playing it, it was nice and responsive. And again, it has that kind of nice clicky mouse feeling to it. And then if we move over here, we have ZR, ZL and L and R um, analog, as you can see there, but they are actually digital. These are the mousey clicks again. But here, this is one of the other things as well. This is another one of my points. So number three are these trigger stops here. You see these here, you can flick this up and it just pops in like that. So there we have that one that goes all the way in and that one is digital. So you can have kind of like quick fire rapid trigger. If you want to one of them, both of them like that or both of them up there like that. It's just a really nice feature. So when you're playing it, you don't even need to look. So I've got it all the way in a little bit there and then just flick it up with your fingers like that, like that. And you've got it. It's a really nice feature. I really appreciate that because sometimes I don't want to be dragging, especially in Switch games where there's no analog. You just flick it up and you leave it there for when you're playing. That's nice. And then number four on my list is if you flip it over, it has two paddles here. So here and here. So when you're there, it's a very natural position to put your finger in there and then to be able to press on the paddle in there and the paddle in there like that. The beauty of this is if you don't like it, you see this big button here, you pop that and you can take it out and it's this bit, remember this bit I get out of the box, you slot that in like that and you have no paddles. So if you don't want paddles and you don't want the feeling of resting on the paddles that are sticking out a little bit, just put it on there and it's just nice and flush. But for me, I like my paddles, so I'm gonna stick that in there like that. So a really nice feature, be able to replace the paddles and they are assignable, obviously, for anything on the, the face button, any of the buttons, you can set those. Okay, number five is the features of this thing. This has a lot going for it. So we've said about the Hall effect sensors. It also has turbo as well. So you can set turbo, which will do automatic or manual. And the automatic one you can set to be faster or slower. And also has an HD rumble as well, which is fantastic in game. So when you're playing, it is much better than most third party controllers with the rumble. You get a very, very nice experience out of this. Right, so connecting it to the switch, a uh, simple case of just hitting the sync button on there and then turn um, syncing it onto the switch, easy. Uh, let's see if it wakes up the switch. So what we do is we click that, there we go. Okay, no problems at all pair waking up the switch from there. Okay, so there's some things here that you probably need to consider before buying this. Um, I've said a lot of positives about this. There are a lot of positives, but my number one thing would probably be the button layout. If you're not used to this button layout, it does take some time getting used to it. You might want this for a specific reason, which is fantastic, but if you just want this to be using in a game playing Zelda or Mario or anything like that, you need to be getting used to this. You've got the A there, you've got the B there, you've got the Y there, and you've got the X there, okay? So you need to be kind of used to it. You need a bit of muscle memory to get used to it, and that might not be for everyone, especially if you're swapping to like handheld back up to here. Another thing for me was this as well. If I take this up here, I take this off, it's not really a huge one, but the, the sticks here are really thin. This plastic here is really thin and I'm just worried I'm going to break this. I don't think it's an issue with it being in there, but I was just something I bet well, needed to point out that this is really thin in there. The other thing, as we've already talked about, is the D-pad. This might not be for you, so you need to consider this, whether this kind of style of D-pad is for you. And then finally, what we did talk about the paddles, whereas they're great, they're comfy, they're on point, they're just a bit hard to press. They're, you need to be a bit heavy on the press. Okay, so good that you can rest your hands on it. It's got this nice grippy material on it, so you know where you are. It's just, you've got to use quite a bit of force to press it. Um, and as long as you're not using that for like jump and you're constantly pressing it, I don't think there'll be any fatigue. But if you do need to press this a lot, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna struggle with it. 
So as I've said in this video, I've mainly been connecting it to the Switch, but it can do other windows. And I said um, the GameCube as well and the Wii, and they're all kind of like a different pairing process, which, which talks about in the manual. So if you are looking for a controller for all of those devices, then this will be superb. Right, so let's quickly then go through all of the colors. So this is the black one. And then we also have the orange one. Okay, so there's a look at the purple one. Here's the orange one. And there's the black one. Obviously identical. Which one is your favorite? Let me know, black, orange, or purple? Be honest with me, for me, purple, but I'll be honest with you, I'll take a black if I wanted to. That's a nice color, isn't it? Now it's now I've got it out. I think the contrast between the buttons and the color of the, the shell lovely. But do let me know, do let me know which one is your favorite out of the three. Okay, I hope I've answered all of your questions off here. It's a banging controller, but you've just got to be careful of the things that I've talked about with the buttons, um, the paddles. Um, the sticks just in case but there is a lot to love about this controller really nice okay um i'll leave links down below where you can get a hold of it and i will have a discount because i've got a nixie discount so you can get some money off go and have a look across the whole of the site on nixie right then that was my look at this then the nixie warrior bluetooth controller for all of the systems please do like please do subscribe until the next video bye bye